Hey guys, welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you something called the switch statement, which will be really useful in the next episode, which is our next challenge episode. So take a look here at the top. I've drawn a little diagram kind of thing here of a little ASCII dungeon game. So if you've ever played Door Fortress or any of those ASCII roguelikes, you'll notice they all use ASCII graphics, which is, you know, letters. And you'll notice that, for instance, in this one, uh, the hash sign is walls, the at sign is the player, dot is air, and s is snake. So we could use like the arrow keys or WSAD uh, to move our player around. And if he tried to move into a wall, we should stop him. If he tried to move into a dot, we should let him move there. And if he tried to move onto an S, we should say, hey, you're fighting the snake and, you know, start a snake battle or something like that. So what we would do is we'd want to use like an if else statement, right? So let's say we read the board already. So say the player tried to move... Uh, onto something. So we have this variable that we read from the board called um, uh, move spot. So this is the spot that the player is trying to move on. And we're going to just set it equal to a dot for now. So we're going to pretend he's moving on to a dot. Now normally we would have a whole, you know, function call that, that checks where the player is and checks which direction he's moving and tries to see which spot he landed on, uh, which you will definitely see in the next episode when I actually implement this stuff. But for now, just imagine that we already did that and we have determined that he landed, or he's trying to move towards a dot. Well, what we could do is we could do a big if-else statement. So if move spot is equal to a dot, then C out, or how about printf, we need to use printf, uh, we don't need to, but it's good to, you can move else if move spot is equal to the hash, then printf, you can't move there, right, and else if move spot is equal to a snake printf battle time something like that so this is going to work uh, and it's gonna work fine let's go ahead and test it and see what we get we should get uh, you can move so there we go we got you can move and if we switch this to an s we should get battle time just to prove that this works there we go we got battle time we all know how if else statements work now there's actually another way to do this. Instead of using an if-else statement, we can use a switch statement. Now the thing about an if-else statement is that you have to actually do this comparison each time. So if we if we type an S here, then our, our, our program is going to be like, okay, does S equal a dot? No, okay, go to the next one. Does S equal a hash? No, go to the next one. Okay, does S equal this? Yes. And that's two extra comparisons. Imagine if we had like a hundred different things that we wanted to do. We would have a hundred if else. And if we typed in, or if we uh, checked something that only got evaluated at the end, we would have to do a hundred if statements. Now we're trying to make programs that run quickly and that make sense. So in this case, what you want to use is a switch statement. Anytime you have just one variable, comparing to one constant value, like this dot is a constant value, this hash is a constant value, then you can use what's called the switch statement. And it does pretty much the same exact thing that this does. So let's go ahead and write a switch statement that is identical to this. So what we do is we type switch, and then in parentheses we put the variable that goes here, the variable that we're comparing and trying to see what it's equal to. So in this case we're comparing move spot. We want to know what move spot is equal to. Then we do braces like this. So the body of the switch statement is where we actually do the comparison. And now all we have to do is for each uh, item in this list, we give it its own case statement. We're going to say case and then which, whatever it is. So we're going to say case dot dot and then we'll have a case hashtag or hash and then a case s. So inside each of these case statements or case blocks, we basically just put what we want to happen. So for the dot, we want to print f, you can move in, or you can move. For the hash, we want to print, you can't move there. And then for the s, we want to print battle time. And actually, I've told you wrong, you need a colon right here at the end. Now, typically, uh, one of the styles that people use is to have the case all the way to the left like this. That's the one I usually use. Uh, but you can also, if you like, you can 
make it go to the right like that. And by the way, the, re the way I made it go to the right is I highlighted the whole thing and pressed tab. And if you press shift tab, it'll go back. So that might save you time trying to do these one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this because I like it like this. So this is going to print out uh, something based on what uh, number we input. However, we're not quite done. We have to do something else. We have to type break and then a semicolon after each of these. Now the reason we have to do that is because if we don't, what's going to happen is whenever we, for instance, say we have a dot for the move spot, whenever it gets to this case dot here and sees, okay, dot is equal to move spot, so we're going to do this, then it's going to do this print statement and it's going to keep going. It's going to do this as well. It's also going to do this unless we have a break statement. Whenever you reach a break statement, what it does is it quits out of the current switch statement or the current loop. You can use these in loops as well. I may have taught you this. So let's see what happens if we don't use break statements like this. If we put in a dot, we're going to get three print statements because it's going to do all three. See, we get you can move. Well, we got four print statements because we're also doing that other if statement. So it did all of those. If you don't use the break, that's going to happen. Um, sometimes you may want it to do that, though. That's the whole point. That's why you need to do the break. What if we could have a dot or a comma is air? Maybe a comma is like a rock or something. Well, what we would do is we put breaks everywhere else because we don't want to get too many. Uh, uh, we don't want to get extra print statements. And let's go ahead and comment this out. And what we can do is if we want it to be a dot or a comma, so it would be as if we had typed if move spot is equal to dot or move spot is equal to comma, the way we do that is we just add case, case, comma above it like that or below it, either way. So what's going to happen is if we type a comma, then our program is going to come to the switch. And then what's great about switch case statements is it uses something I think called a jump table. So you don't have to do all the comparisons. Usually it just immediately goes to the correct one. So the comma is going to immediately go right here to this case. Now since there's no break right here, it's going to keep going and it's going to go to this case and then keep going and print this out. So the comma essentially does the exact same thing that the dot does. So it's going to print this and then it's going to hit the break and it's going to quit the switch so that we don't do these extra print statements that we don't want to do. So that's the switch case statement. It's really useful for things like this and for comparing you know just a variable to an integer like you can type integers in here 44 or something like that. However you can't uh, you can't put uh, like a variable in here. If we had like int a equals 6 or something or 5, we can't put a here. It has to be constant. The things you put in these uh, this spot right here to check again has to be constant. Now if we had a constant int a at the top like this equals 5, then we could use that. We could put a here and that would be fine and it wouldn't it wouldn't give us an error. So Thanks for watching this video, guys. In the next episode, you're probably going to put this to use. You don't have to use a switch case. You can totally just use if else if you're more comfortable with that. But just know that whenever you're doing this where you're, you're doing just uh, comparisons uh, to constant values, what you're supposed to do is use a switch. It, it communicates to whoever's reading your code that this is just a variable that's being compared to constants. And it's also, there's a good chance that it might run a little faster than if else. It's not really... Uh, guaranteed to run faster, but it can run faster. So that's all you need to know. Thanks, guys. Be ready for the next episode.